My name is Ram Reddy, and I'm the managing partner of Sprinter. The purpose of this short video is to show you how a sensationalist media, based on the opinion of one soccer coach, combined with far-left environmental groups, is trying to destroy an American industry. A coalition of three national turf companies, FieldTurf, AstroTurf, and SprintTurf, formed the Safe Fields Alliance to try to get the facts out. However, these three reputable companies have neither the money, the resources, or the lawyers to take on NBC, ESPN, and various far-left environmental groups, and we have to find alternate methods to get our message out. First, some background. This is not a story about artificial turf. Artificial turf, as you know, provides five times the playing time of natural grass and has no insecticide, fertilizer, or water. This is a story about crumb rubber. No turf company manufactures crumb rubber, and we do not have a dog in this fight. Of course, given the media hype, we have looked at alternates, but continue to believe that crumb rubber continues to be the best protection for players at this time. Tires do not constitute hazardous waste, as has been alleged in the media. NBC first ran their story in October 2014. The story was so one-sided that I wrote to the president of NBC alleging negligence. NBC got in touch with me and told me that a follow-up story was coming, which would be more balanced. They interviewed me for the follow-up story, and 95% of the story ended up on the cutting room floor. This video restores some of those facts and provides some additional facts. A full transcript of the NBC interview is available on sprinter.com. So let's talk about the three key points regarding crumb rubber. One, every modern turf field has less lead and heavy metals than children's toys and less lead and heavy metals than the EPA standard for urban and rural soils. In 2013, the European Union further identified 18 heavy metals in children's toys and developed the EU 71-3 toy standard. Crumb rubber passes every element of this standard, mostly by a wide margin. Lead and crumb rubber is non-detectable to 18 parts per million versus 160 in the toy standard. Arsenic and crumb rubber, non-detectable versus 47 in the toy standard. Cadmium, non-detectable in crumb versus 17 in the toy standard. Crumb rubber also passes every requirement of California's Prop 65 standard. California further developed a new guideline called CHHSL, California Human Health Screening Level, and crumb rubber passes every element of CHHSL. In layman's terms, crumb rubber has less nickel than chocolate, less benzene than a can of soda, less arsenic than rice baby cereal. Where would your children rather play? On a certified crumb rubber field or on urban and rural soils that are not certified, rarely measured, and are full of insecticides and pesticides from unknown origins in unknown quantities. I want my child on an artificial turf field. The second point, as hard as it is to believe, there is not one single published peer-reviewed study that demonstrates a health concern from crumb rubber. On the other hand, there are 35 plus inhalation studies, 30 plus ingestion studies, and 15 plus dermal studies that show no health concerns. These are not industry studies like the media claims. These are studies done by public health organizations, academia, and independent schools. I quote from the state of Connecticut. The Connecticut Department of Health finds no scientific support for finding of elevated cancer risk from inhalation or ingestion of chemicals derived from recycled tires used in crumb rock. The report goes on to say, the current news reports of a list of soccer players with cancer 
do not constitute a correlation or casualty and thus raises a concern that lacks scientific support. There are several of these key studies posted on the Safe Fields Alliance website, safefieldsalliance.com, and the Synthetic Turf Council website, synthetic-turf-council.org. Please educate yourself on the science. Ah, what about the Yale study? We can't get off this without talking about the quote-unquote Yale study. The Yale study is not a study. It has not been published. It has not been endorsed by Yale or peer-reviewed. To our knowledge, there is not even an unpublished manuscript. The analysis apparently consists of harsh extraction methods not relevant to evaluating human health concerns. Shaking crumb rubber in vials full of methylene chloride, a component of paint stripper, and heating it to 300 degrees centigrade would yield chemicals from day-to-day -day consumer items like your iPhone, toys, or kitchenware. Further, the sponsor of this quote-unquote study, EHHI, falsely labels multiple chemicals as carcinogens that are not carcinogenic and not labeled carcinogenic by the EPA, the National Toxicology Program, or the IARC. So far, we've made two key points. Crumb rubber is safer than children's toys and urban and rural soils. There's not been one published study that shows any health concerns versus 65 plus studies that show that there are no health concerns. However, there is a third key point. The cancer being discussed is predominantly adolescent lymphoma and leukemia. NBC News, in their reporting, claimed that Amy Griffin's anecdotal data identified 65 cases of cancer. 65 too many. One sick child is one too many. However, it might surprise you to know that 16,000 cases of cancer for children and adolescents existed in 2014. Predominantly, the same type of adolescent lymphoma and leukemia which is the most prevalent form of cancer for children and adolescents. Most of these kids have never seen a turf field. Football has over 10,000 fields of playing on artificial turf, and we do not see the clusters that Coach Griffin claims. And last but not least, decades and decades of medical research have never linked adolescent lymphoma and leukemia to any form of chemical exposure. They're typically tied to genetic disorders, autoimmune disease, etc., but never to chemical exposure. Finally, crumb rubber is a mechanical process with no chemicals added. Tires are made from rubber, which is inert. Rubber is in our daily lives, from gloves to toys to kitchenware. In theory, rubber gets crumbled when your tires wear down. So if you have concerns about recycled rubber, then you have concerns about rubber. People ask about the long-term effects of crumb rubber. Well, we've had rubber in our lives for decades with no negative effects. So I want to summarize the three key points. One, every single crumb rubber field is certified to be safer than children's toys and urban and rural soils. Two, there has not been one single study that shows, published study, that shows any type of health concern with crumb rubber. There have been 70, 65 to 70 studies worldwide that actually show no health concerns. Three, adolescent lymphoma and leukemia, which is the predominant cancer being discussed here, has never been linked to chemical exposure of any kind. In closing, I ask that this be an ethical debate focused on science. Sprint turf, along with field turf and astroturf, spend a lot of time on player safety and try to conduct our business with ethics and integrity. In that light, I must, must ask the following questions. Julie Favi, who did the ESPN report, along with Amy Wombach, her friend and teammate, spend a lot of time in the media criticizing artificial turf. 
which is their right. However, Amy Wombach should indicate that she has a commercial relationship with Scott's Fertilizer, a great sponsor of natural grass. EHHI pretends the Yale study is a, is a published study and a valid study, and it is not, and will never pass peer review. They should also disclose that they've been a proponent of natural gra grass since 2007. And if you look at their website, they actually believe that campfires should be banned. What next? Finally, why is Coach Griffin creating a database that's mostly unavailable for analysis except to a select few? NBC had the opportunity to examine this list and even with their bias, excluded over one half of that list from consideration. Make the list public so we can analyze it and find the true cause. In that light, why does Amy Griffin continue to play on an artificial turf field? It is time to stop panicking parents and children and start focusing on the science. I have tried to focus on the facts in this video. Any opinions expressed are purely the opinions of Sprinter. Thank you for your time.